You've ever heard someone say, I have a slow metabolism, or maybe you've told yourself that. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what that even means and why you 100% need to understand this so that you can make better decisions long-term when it comes to your health and fitness goals. For quick context, my name is Caitlin Vernon. I'm a certified nutrition and fitness coach who helps women build lean muscle, lose body fat, and keep it off for life. Now there's so many complex physiological processes that you know happens within our body that relates to metabolism that go just a little bit deeper than calories in, calories out. And when it comes to fat loss and hypertrophy, you know, simply meaning an increase in muscle size, there are four key parts of your metabolism that matters most. And the good news is that they're pretty simple to understand once you break them down. And they each have their own acronym. And once you learn how to use them, you'll finally be able to work with your metabolism instead of fighting against it. So every day our body burns calories at a maintenance level, right? This is called your total daily energy expenditure or for short your TDEE. Think of this as like the umbrella term. And under this umbrella, there's other small smaller concepts that fit within your TDEE. So there are four main categories that fall into this. Number one, let's start with your BMR or your basal metabolic rate. And this makes up around 60 to 70% of your caloric burn. Your BMR is essentially your body's energy requirement to fuel biological processes outside of physical activity. For example, such as you breathing, our lungs inflating and deflating, digestion such as our colon contracting and our hearts beating. I want you to think of this as any function that our body has to perform just to live and pretty much keep the lights on. So clients often ask me, can I increase my metabolism? How do I do that? The answer is yes, but to a certain extent. Now, while resistant training can build more muscle and help raise your BMR, since muscle is more metabolically active, there is research that suggests that the impact and the increase on muscle mass on your resting caloric burn is relatively small. Meaning, yes, you will burn more calories at rest when you have more muscle, but not to a huge drastic extent. A more significant boost to overall increase your energy expenditure usually comes from increasing both your exercise activity thermogenesis, your EAT, and your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your NEAT. So I like to emphasize this to clients and highlight how moving more throughout the day can have a bigger impact on fat loss alone. But you also have to keep in mind when you're in a calorie deficit and when you're losing weight, you're subconsciously gonna wanna move less throughout the day. So yes, your needs might go down. Now, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and when I say thermogenesis, I'm simply just referring to your body producing heat by burning calories. So now, as you can see on this chart, this makes up around 20% of your total daily burn. This is calories burned through daily activities outside of your structured exercise, such as your unplanned walks, running errands, playing with your kids, and even you fidgeting at your desk. Like the way I'm moving with my hands and talking to you guys, I'm burning calories. It's just to a small amount. And believe it or not, most people burn more calories through their NEAT than just regular exercise alone, depending on how intense it is, of course. And now for the next part, this is why calories in and calories out isn't so simple. Because of the thermic effect of food or your TEF. Now certain foods require more energy for our body to break it down and process it. And out of the three macronutrients, protein has the highest TEF. So for example, if you were to eat 2000 calories of just carbs, versus 2000 calories of just protein, your caloric burn would be a lot higher from just eating the higher protein meal. Now it's extremely difficult to eat 2000 calories worth of protein, but it's relatively easy to eat 2000 calories worth of carbs. Like the desire to eat a plate of chicken breast just isn't there, but the desire to eat a plate of penne, it's definitely there. Protein has a TEF of around 30%, meaning if I were to eat 2000 calories of protein, my body would burn 600 extra calories just to break down and process that food. Now carbs has a lower TEF, around 10%, so I would burn around 200 calories from eating 2,000 worth of carbs on my plate. Now when it comes to the last macronutrients for fats, fats has the lowest TEF of around 3%, so out of that 2,000 calories, if I were to eat 2,000 calories worth of high fatty foods, on average my body is gonna burn around 60 calories to break it down. So fat is very easy for your body to process and store, which is one of the reasons why it's so energy dense and very efficient as an energy source for you know, longer sustained energy or more lower intensity cardio. And it's why it can be very easy to overconsume without even realizing it. So we covered three parts of our total daily energy expenditure so far. We covered our BMR, our NEAT, and our TEF. So now the last concept within our TDEE is our exercise activity thermogenesis, or our EAT for short. So this is energy or calories that are burned simply from our planned workouts. And this makes up around only 5%, because out of our total TDEE, this is the smallest contributing factor. So you can try to out train or outwork a bad diet all you want, but I want you to look at it this way. It can take you five minutes to overeat on a thousand calories, but how long do you think you're gonna need to work out or run in the treadmill to really burn that off? Now, while workouts do matter for strength, you know, muscle performance, it's not just the main fat loss tool. 
right? I really want to put this into perspective for you guys. It can take me five minutes to eat a thousand calories, but if I needed to run on the treadmill to burn off that thousand calories, I'm probably going to need to run for an hour or two. It's just not sustainable and it's not the best approach. You're better off controlling your calorie intake as opposed to trying to out train a bad diet. And this is not even just from experience, like this is what the science is telling you. So obviously while workouts do matter for overall strength, muscle, performance, they're not just the main fat loss tool, your nutrition and daily movements are. And listen, I get it, you know, for so long, the fitness industry has drilled us into thinking that the key to results is burning as many calories as possible every workout or cutting out your carbs, going keto or jumping from one extreme to the next. But once you really start to understand the science and even though, yes, it's a bit nuanced, it's not impossible. It becomes clear that a lot of what you have been told or what you currently are doing isn't really helping you. In fact, it might be holding you back. Whether your goal is fat loss, muscle growth, or just building and maintaining strength, there's a better and effective way to go about it. And I truly hope this video brought you guys some insight on how to properly utilize it. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And just because I love you guys so much, I included a free guide in the description below that breaks down how to understand nutrition and pretty much apply it to your specific goals. Like I said, whether that's fat loss, building muscle, or just feeling more in control of your eating. So click the link down below to grab it and I'll see you in the next one.